The situations you find um, uh, sort of predicting homelessness are unbelievably consistent, whether you're in Adelaide or New York City. Uh, frequently, individuals who experience homelessness, especially in a long-term fashion, have had a history of institutional involvement. They've been uh, in foster care. They've been regularly hospitalized. They've had mental health difficulties. They've been in jail. Also, you see a great deal of uh, sort of compounded misfortune. Um, you know, you'll, you'll see especially many men who um, lost a partner or lost a job and lost a partner, started drinking, and there was no sort of family safety net to catch them, or the, uh, there, there were other disruptions in their lives, and one thing happened after another. It's usually the case that you know, all of us can sustain one terrible blow, and even two. But you know, what I've seen over the years is it's usually a combination of three life blows in quick succession uh, has really derailed a person. And without financial resources, and more importantly, without a, a social network that can sustain someone through those troubles, that's what you see kind of launching people into homelessness. And that's true in whatever city, whatever culture I visited. And so the, the way that people overcome homelessness is not through a program or going to get one service. Uh, it's, it's really with a more comprehensive uh, approach to what they need that begins with, uh, uh, sort of, frankly, a stable home, which you know, is a metaphor for a welcome back into the community and, and you know, away from the social margin and the, sort of the personal struggle that's kept someone vulnerable and on the outside. But it's very, very striking, and I think you'll you'll find any you know case file you'd look at for a, a person who's been homeless for a long time in South Australia, for instance, that one of those institutions has played a factor in their lives, if not more, and that there have been a series of losses.